It's a game that means always more than the three points at stake for these two particular teams. Geographically, it is the fiercest of rivalries. Swansea City, though, have beaten Cardiff City to avenge that early season defeat. And the man in charge for that one today was Luke Williams. Luke, we've enjoyed every single minute of the game. Can, of the game. Can you possibly put that into words and what it means to you? Oh, it's difficult at the moment, to be quite honest. But I think uh, pride, you know, to, to be... Um, the head coach of wonderful football club and win the derby is uh, it's hard to describe completely at the moment but it's a brilliant feeling. The way that your team went about it, I mean we talk about derbies need, needing cool heads and a real composure to the game, it felt like your players had that in abundance. I'm so pleased, I'm so impressed with them as well because the combination of being like really intense and aggressive but then to combine that with calmness and, and composure I think is something we strive for, you know, as, as coaches. And, and today, the players were incredible. And I know the way you want to approach your football with Swans. You want to dominate the football. You want to dominate statistically what the game is. I mean, an XG of 2.76 as opposed to there's 0.67. That reflects what you saw with your own eyes and the result, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, that's the idea, you know, create chances and deny at the other end. And, and uh, it's a perfect combination. You can't always achieve that. Uh, you know, we learned that uh, on the road at Bristol City it was really, really tough. We, we were able to dominate the game, but we couldn't hit the target. And then today we're back to being able to dominate and combine that with, with creating chances to score goals and can't really ask for much more from the players today. Now, in a game such as this, you need players that can strike a ball well, that are technically, technically very proficient. Um, I must say, the way that you kicked that ball off the cone when that second goal went in as you went charging down the line, that would look out of place in the rugby side in Wales, would it? Yeah, mate, I apologise, but I'm just watching the images now. Yeah, it's not a bad strike. I've got hold of that one quite well. I think uh, probably as well as Grimes got hold of his one that was in the first half, looked like that was gold bound. But I, I, to be honest, uh, I don't really think uh, I knew what was going on at that moment. It's just so happy to, to share the moment with, with the fans and the, and the players. And yeah, a little bit naughty, that one. But just <laughs> it was sitting there staring at me, so felt like I needed to... Let some energy out. <laughs> well, I think it's landed in the car park somewhere, so some young scallywags been able to get a brand new football off the back of that. Um, speaking of younger players and their effect on the game, Liam Cullen today, I mean, you can tell how much it means to him. A whirlwind of emotions. He scores the goal, he misses the penalty, he misses a big chance, but broadly that smile at the end was there for all to see. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the, the things I try to preach to the, to the strikers is to, to be there to miss, you know, and... Uh, if you're scared to go into those places and you're scared to miss and you 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 know you don't want that you don't want that feeling then you're not going to ever get to the point where you score a lot of goals and 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 Coles is a brave guy and he just he's that won't deter him he's going to keep going and he was brave enough to step up and take a penalty in the derby and uh, brave enough to miss so he he will grow from this and uh, he's a, he's got fantastic character and uh, he's got great quality as well so he's going to improve and improve well, most shots of any Swansea player during the course of the game, so that shows how effective he can be. Um, from your point of view, obviously Swansea City is a club that you know well. You're now obviously steering the ship. You've been in since January. Was it that stereotypical reminder of, well, the one game that you do need to win is the game against Cardiff City, above all else? Yeah, I think um, we, we, we need to try to reconnect with, with the fans and um, I really hope that today you know, is a step in the right direction. The team played with, a, I think it's fair to say, with a passion. They played, they connected with the fans. They gave them something to, to try and make a noise about. And then, of course, they obliged. They made noise and they were with us throughout the whole game. And they helped us, I think, through a few tough moments, which you're going to face in any game, particularly in the derby. So, no, it was a, it's a huge, uh, huge game for us and, and to give joy to so many people. And we're so happy we've done that today. Is that the key part of that, a stepping stone? Because, yes, it's a victory that puts you eight above the bottom three. I get the sense that yourself, as a young manager, as your coaching staff and the players that you've got, Swansea City's aspirations are at least top half, aren't they? What does it give you now between here and the end of the season, then hopefully for you going into next season? Absolutely. We, we need to capture the, you know, the feelings that we, we had today and, and we have to try to reproduce that. We have to try to, uh, like I said before, we have to try to connect with the fans so that we get more people here, we get more noise, we get uh, a different type of atmosphere in the, in the home games. Um, this, is, this is the idea and this today was a great example of, of how that can be done. 
Well, look, we really appreciate you taking the time. Look, I mean, if, I know a manager's lot is a real tough one, but safe to say, my friend, you can absolutely go and enjoy yourself. Go and get that ball out of the car park first. Give it back to the <laughs> EFL. I know they're hot on keeping hold of the footballs, but go and enjoy yourself. Yeah. A wonderful big day for you today. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Luke Williams there, the Swansea City boss. Very happy indeed with what he's seen. And let's get into why he's very happy with what he's seen. Liam Cullen was the man that put them ahead in the first half. Discussions at half-time, Chris, about whether there was a foul in the build-up to this. I mean, you do get games where they don't tend to go for you, and it was a sticky one across the board, wasn't it, for Perry and G? But do Cardiff have any qualms, or should they have any qualms with this? I think if, from a Cardiff's point of view, Yes, you're going to appeal. Yes, you're going to maybe say it is a foul. Um, it's one of those where if you're a Swansea player or, or supporter, mm. you're saying it's not a foul from Cardiff, so you're going to say it is. I think he knows that he, he's probably not going to reach the cross and, he, and he's tried to make sure it is a foul. But for me personally, no, I can see why it's not been given. If you're looking as a centre-half, Ash, and your central midfielder, Ryan Wintle, has switched off to a certain degree and left... Cullen with that type of space yeah. is that something you're addressing with him it's a tough one because when you when you run it back to the start and where you see Wintle is actually has got himself in not a bad position so as, as a, a recovery type yeah position. he's okay. just getting in there but Cullen's been clever and he's pulled right off around the back so I can see why it looks like he's ran off him but I, I think it'd be tough to, to blame Wintle um, probably what you would have liked to have seen is Perry and G probably communicating with his defense a little bit better to mm -hmm. slide over because when you look at it here, I mean, it's relatively comfortable for Cardiff to deal with. Yeah, and, and as you see, as a centre midfielder, you want him to go and try and get in between his two centre halves mm -hmm. and cover the space. The colour, but instead of Cullen going down the middle, he's gone round the back, and then I don't think that's a foul at all. I think we see much worse on a corner or a set piece. Mm -hmm. He's actually just been clever and blocked off uh, Perry NG at the, the fullback, knowing that it was going to go over his head, and then a good finish from Cullen. But it, when uh, the only real Criticism, I would say, is probably a little bit more communication mm -hmm. for the Cardiff defence to not be so far over to the left and, and hold their shape a little bit. It's a tough one to, to blame Wintel on that, I think. Liam Cullen had a very busy game, of course. There was a penalty miss in the second half. Um, first question, Chris, is this a penalty? <sighs> I'm glad you asked, <laughs> you I'm glad spot, you asked yeah. Chris. You'll get, you'll get in a minute, Ash, don't worry. I think, again, do you know what, like the... The, the first goal, mm. I think, it, whichever side of the fence you fall on, you're going mm. to argue whether it is or isn't. Me personally, in that one, I think it's quite harsh. Mm -hmm. I think they both got hold of each other. Um, he's he's going to go down. He's going to look for it, but I, I do think it's it's slightly fortunate. He, he finds himself not in the in the greatest position, mm -hmm. um, and then he's scrambling. But no, I, I don't. Th I think it's quite soft. Well, Lincoln Cullen had a wonderful way of describing the missed penalty of um, the composure was there, just not the placement, which is a very positive way of putting a spin on missing the target, isn't it? And yeah. pulling his leg, of course. Yeah, no, I think to, uh, he, was, he was right, really, wasn't yeah. he? He did look quite confident stepping up to it. And it's, it's not the worst penalty you've ever seen. He, ju he was just the wrong side of the, of the, <laughs> of the goalpost, I was thinking. To be pedantic, he... though, I mean, because it's not the right side of the post, does it then make it a bad penalty? Well, yeah, probably. Um, listen, you're talking to the wrong guys about to, uh, scoring goals and, the wrong and taking penalties. Asking you the question, isn't <laughs> but but it, I, I was thinking, imagine how he feels when mm. he when he stepped up to it because he, you know, Swansea fan, he knew that the game was over at that point if he mm. scored it, and then he doesn't, and then from then on out, it's just. I bet he was so nervous, especially like he said when he come off and he has to watch and he can't affect it, mm -hmm. and he's just hoping that. But me, uh, we, me and Chris were talking before. There's certain times in games where that happens, and as a defender, you're saying, "Okay, well, we'll, we'll pull him out of this mm. because we, we're not going to. We're going to keep a clean sheet and make sure that he does get the headlines for the right reason." It's a real likability about Liam and the way that he's approached the game today. You could tell how much it meant to him, and as Ash is talking about how he celebrates at the end when the final goal goes in. Right, uh, uh, Jamal Lowe coming off the bench to really put the game to bed. Um, there's a certain element of this, Chris, when you're looking at it thinking run into the corner and stay there, but if, if you're not going to do that, then scoring's the nearest best thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think the defender's probably made his mind up of, of when he's, he, he's, he's gone for the ball, he's missed it, and then he's probably thinking, well, I need to, I have to go towards goal, mm. and they've got numbers over, Cardiff have obviously really stretched, they're chasing the game, um, and, and yeah, I, I feel from a Swansea point of view, that goal they get the celebrations for, mm. the, for it at the end and uh, caps off a really good day for them. Um, I thought he was potentially going to square it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as, as Ash said, I'm sure 
everyone, in, including Coles, is, is really pleased with, with that final goal. And it's been a great day for them, hasn't it? And the traditional Swansea City celebration off the back of that one from Jamal Lowe. They've won eight of the last 11 South Wales derbies have Swansea City. So, yes. Errol, was it the start of that game which set the tone for everything that followed? The first 30 minutes was for us a little bit frustrating. Uh, we didn't come in the game really well, and but we knew it. We knew it. We said uh, they will come with uh, pressure and uh, we had also our options uh, to play out, but we... We couldn't manage it well the first 30 minutes. Uh, second half was much, much better. Uh, where we made the, that pressure to push the opponent for mistakes. Where we got also a few chances to come back uh, to score maybe the 1-1. One, one. But uh, well, I believe uh, the first uh, goal from the opponent, it was a foul. My opinion is clear against Angie. He was pulling him on his shot and pushing him away. And uh, OK, he saw it uh, different how he gave the penalty for the opponent where NG was pulling. So it's two similar uh, positions. So then you have to whistle also like that. Uh, OK, but uh, the referee saw it different. How I said, first uh, 30 minutes disappointing. Second half on this weekend, we can, we can build. Of course, we would like to win that game to make the double-double. It was uh, in our hand. Uh, Maybe it was also a little bit of pressure because of that. Uh, uh, okay, but we can we can live with this. We we don't put our head now down and uh, say ah no everything is destroying because we have to build on this what we create the last few weeks uh, to come back in this situation and uh, now we have the international break. We will take rest and uh, come back uh, strongly. You had to make the two changes at half time. Was that to bring a bit more control or composure to the team? Because Yaku Meite seemed like he couldn't carry on. Yeah, I, I want to make that pressure uh, up in front. Uh, so, well, we didn't have this in, in the first uh, 30 minutes. Uh, so that's why we made we made that uh, changes that we can push much uh, much higher to create uh, to push opponent for mistakes and uh, it works good. But we couldn't manage to score. Do you feel you have to give credit to Swansea City for the way they were able to dominate in that sense? Yeah, but this, this was uh, OK from, uh, from our side. So we, we, we knew we, we, we let them to, to keep the ball, to keep the ball and to push them for mistakes. How we did it second half in the 30, uh, first 30 minutes. This was the uh, mistake where we couldn't uh, push them for, for that mistakes. And uh, that's why. Uh, didn't went really well, but we considered uh, that goal. Appreciate your time, Errol. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cardiff boss speaking in a very balanced uh, and unemotional way come the end of this game, even though there's plenty of things in it that he's clearly frustrated with. Perry and G is very much to the fore in everything that went kind of against them, of course, in the course of the game. Now, the question that we asked with regards to this actually standing as a goal was, was there a foul on Perry and G? I got Chris's take on this. Ash, what about you? What do you think? I think I think Chris nailed it. If you if you're in the Cardiff camp, you're going to say it's a foul. If you're in the Swansea camp, you're not. For me personally, it's not it's not enough for a foul. I, I think I think the referee refed the game well all day. He, he let a lot of things go. This one, uh, this one's even tougher to call to be honest because I can, they've both got hold of each other's shirt. Uh, Ronaldo's gone down. He's seen his op an opportunity to go down and he's gone down and he's got a penalty. That would be the one that I would say is more. Uh, of a mistake, if there is one. This one? No. <laughs> it's, they're, they're all they're, like he's got. He, I can't argue. Are okay. they all in the balance when you yeah, look at those? Yeah, because if he gives the penalty on that one, you go, okay, he's got. He has got a handful of his shirt mm. for a good three or four seconds, so you can't argue it. Is it enough for a penalty? Probably not. So mm. I think on the, on the balance of the whole game, the ref probably got most decisions correct. But we could go back from the start with. Uh, Mate and Darling, and, and uh, he, he let that one go a little bit, gave them both yellow cards. I thought he managed a, a tough situation really well. The, 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 the second, the, the penalty for Swansea is the one, though, if I had to say one was wrong, maybe that one. I suppose that is the contrary opinion, of course, whether Yaku Mate should have had a red card in the first half, but David Webb and his officials letting the game flow to the benefit, of course, of what we saw as a spectacle. Um, Cardiff, given where they are, Chris, five points off the top six. They've already got more points now than they had at the end of last season. Is a playoff push realistic? Well, you asked me before the game, and I, I said I think they 
they're outsiders. You look at that, it's five points. Goal difference is probably six with with not a lot of games to go. And, and as I said before, not having the luxury of having too many days like today. Mm -hmm. So whilst there's still, there's still, what, five, six points that some some way away from it, mm. but there's talk of it as a possibility, then and then of course they'll keep going for it. But you'd have to say with, with the amount of games left, it, it looks quite unlikely or it, it would take some effort for them to, to finish in the top six come the end of the season, I think. And key battles coming up, of course, Coventry and Hull. Quick word on Coventry City, my word, beating uh, Wolves in the FA Cup earlier on today in a topsy-turvy game. Mark Robbins doing Mark Robbins things once again. Um, big, big week coming up for you and the Welsh squad. It must be nice to watch a game and relax and not have a vested interest in it, obviously to a certain degree with regards to Cardiff, but now the real work starts tomorrow when the squad joins up. Yeah, big week. Um, it'll go extremely quickly from tomorrow to the games on Thursday, so we haven't got a load of time on the grass with the players. Mm -hmm. um, but no, a huge week. We, we know what, what's at the end of hopefully two games mm -hmm. um, and what's there for us in the summer. So yeah, huge week for Wales. The, the Swansea boys will turn up Really Was pleased <laughs> tomorrow. Um, the Cardiff ones, not so much. But hopefully, in ten days' time, then we'll, we'll start here. You know, on the back of of getting to another major tournament, which is what you know the whole of Wales wants, and I think we're really excited for it. Oh, one big happy family wants John. A bit like us here at Sky Sports, Jen. What match? وانت بتحقق نتائج رحت اخترت بيب جارديولا فبدأ مشروع السيتي. اصلا السيتي في المشروع بتاع ابو ظبي كان الملك القديم مشاكل الفرقه لا تحقق شيء فرقه منتصف جدول فرقه لا تنافس على اي شيء خدتها مجموعه ابو ظبي لو قالوا لو شمروا كده وبيقولوا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهم بيقولوا بسم الله يحققوا انجاز لان السيتي يعني السيتي القديم طبعا ما احترمنا ما كانش الفرقه الواو يعني مش زي السيتي دلوقتي فانت اي حاجه هتعملها هناك الناس اه ده والله اختراع النار الناس هناك هتعجب بيك في استاد الاتحاد وتجديد استاد جمهور ابتدى يحضر نفس تجربه تقريبا اولاس مع ليون لما كان استاد فاضي فرقه لا تحقق اي شيء فرقه متوسطه جدول اتحط مشروع ابتدى ويزدم اوف كراود ابتدت التعاقدات مع اللعيبه بيع لعيبه شراء لعيبه فوز متتالي بالدوري الفرنسي لمده 8 سنين متتاليه ابتدى الجمهور يكتر ويقعد يحضر في الاستاد وكده ده طبيعه المبيعات او كره القدم نفس الفكره كانت لمشروع السيتي الكلير كلارك خدت فريق بطل للعالم بطل لاوروبا بطل للسوبر الاوروبي بطل للعالم متوج في ابو ظبي في بطوله شاهدتها بام عيني كنا على قمه العالم يا شباب كنا على قمه العالم وحدث ما حدث والحرب جت وبراموفيتش مشي وجت المجموعه الامريكيه. ان تبدا من حيث انتهيت مش انك تبتدي من الصفر. تبتدي كانك انت برايتون. تبتدي كانك انت كريستال بالاس، تبتدي كانك انت فولها للاسف الاداره جت بطموح محدود. العقليه جت ليميتد اصلا. فبدل ما تبتدي بصفقات يعني ايه الاسهل ليك وانت جاي على نادي بطل عالم من موسم انك تجيب الصفقات السوبر وقتها ولا ان انا احل واجدد واجيب كله شباب ما اجيبش اي حد سوبر انت في وقتها لو قلت عايز هالاند كنت تجيب هالاند لو عايز امبابي تجيب مبابي طبعا مش بالاسماء دي يعني بتكلم على كنايه عن النجوم اللي انت عايز تروح تجيبها بدل ما دلوقتي حد يقول لك اصل ضبابيه المشروع لا والله ده انا هروح ارسنال، لا والله ده انا بختار ليفربول، لا والله ده انا مش عارف ايه، تخيل انت حتى الان اللعيبه لحد الميركاتو اللي فات اللعيبه اختارت تشيلسي، بس انت عندك فرق توقيت غلط، عندك مشكله كاداره. انك بدايه الخطا وبدايه البيز وبدايه القاعده الخطا انك ابتديت غلط، ما ابتديتش من حيث انتهينا، لا ده انت ابتديت فروم سكراتش، قلت والله يا جماعه تعالوا نهد المعبد كله ونبتدي من اول وجديد. فجيت لي بطموح محدود فبقى عندي دلوقتي قضيتين قضيه الـ الـ الاداره وقضيه الماركت وطلباته وعقلياته وازاي تنجح وفكره المشروع والبرنامج وعندك حاجه كبيره بقى فوقهم اسمها عقليه جمهور تشيلسي اللي عهد 20 سنه متطلب بيفوز بالبطوله عايز يكسب فانت عندك دلوقتي ثلاث رؤى مختلفه 3 بروسبكتيفز الماركت وطلباته وفكره المشروع والصبر عليه الليميتيشن اللي عند العقليه بتاعت الاداره بتاعتنا وانها 
طموحهم تحت الارض فرحانين بنقطه من التعادل مع برينتفورد وبيدافعوا عن هذا المدرب زي ما راحوا جابوا جيرهان بوتر زي ما سابوا نايجلزمان وسابوا انريكي عشان هم مش عايزين مش عايزين وجع دماغ احنا مش عايزين وجع دماغ انا لسه هيخش لي مع مدرب يقرع عليا في مؤتمر ومدرب هيقول لي مش عارف ده انا عايز ايه لا ده اللعيب بتاعك طب اهو مرمي دك عشان انا عايز اللعيب الفلاني احنا مش عايزين وجع دماغ وانا يعني عشان ادي نفسي امل وعشان ما اقولش احنا في وقت ما زي الكرونكي قديما او الجليزرز هقول ان الاداره لا تعلم وان هذا الفكر الرجعي ابو فرق توقيت هو فكر الناس اللي بتعين بول وليستالي ولورانس ستيوارت هم اللي مش عايزين وجع دماغ هم اللي مش عايزين جرجر كتير هم اللي مش عايزين مدرب يقول لا او اه وحاضر ونعم ويتدخل في كل شيء هم عايزين حد يقودوه هم وهنأى بنفسي ان انا ابعد الاداره عن هذه الشبهه لان انا كوسيم مش عايز اعتقد ان توت بويل واقبالي هم اللي بيفكروا كده والا هتبقى مصيبتنا مصيبه. هبص على انهم عايزين يعملوا فكر وهبص على عمليه البيع اللي اتعملت <تصفيق> وهبص على استخدامات الشباب ونظام الاعارات وتعيين الاعارات هبص على حاجات انا عايز اديكوا بيها حجه هو الاثنين اللي عينوا بوتر وبوتيتشيني هم اللي عندهم المشكله خليني امشي في الاستنتاج والطرح ده لان الطرح الثاني مصيبه الطرح الثاني مصيبه الطرح الثاني يعني احنا ممكن نقعد زي ارسنال كده 15 17 سنه من ثلاث سنين انا كنت بطل العالم فانا دلوقتي الثلاث رؤى المختلفه اللي عندي تدخلك على طول في مرحله شك كان دايما يعني كان كان جوران اريكسون مدرب المنتخب الانجليزي السابق ومدرب لاتسيو في التسعينات كان بيتكلم ان انا بعامل الاداره ان انا عايز اطلب يكلم رئيس النادي يقول له اديني كريستيان فيري عايز اشتري كريستيان فيري من اتلتيكو مدريد طب ده بيكلف بالليره الايطالي وقتها 50 مليون مثلا يقول له اشتريه يقول لك الراجل ساعتها راح عشان ما يضيعش وقت وعشان انا عايزه في الفرقه اشترى ب 50 ونجح انه يكسب بيه بطولات اريكسون وبتاع واتباع بعد كده للانتر اعتقد ب 90 او ب 100 مليون ليره ليره ايطالي. فالراجل كان بيتكلم على موضوع فرق التوقيت وان ازاي الملاك بيسمعوا للمدرب لفكره يلا هنغير لان مهما كان مثلا ال- 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 لو هنتكلم في المشروع بيب جوارديولا حواليه من الناس ومديرين رياضيين والحلومة دي كلها احنا بنشوف بيب قاعد في اخر كل صيف او اخر كل موسم مع الشيخ منصور فابو ظبي بيتفقوا هم عايزين ايه؟ قعد تتنامى على طول لسماعك سيد ابراموفيتش ادفع ولا تتكلم. فاهم فاهم الفكره؟ انا عندي وسيط حاليا عامل لي الازمه بتاعت فرق التوقيت دي. وسيط في التعيينات عامل لي الازمه بتاعت فرق التوقيت دي وانا متاكد ان بولو ستانلي ولونس ستيوارت ليهم علاقه حلوه جدا بفابريزيو رومانو وارنيستن ومات لو والاخبار بتطلع من ناحيتهم بس ولما يحبوا ياكدوا على صفقه او ياكدوا على لاعب بعينه او ان المدرب مكمل او ماشي او يتسربوا خبر ان بندور على مدرب بديل لبوتر بتطلع بره الاثنين دول بتطلع من خلالهم يعني طب هل يعقل ان انا يبقى عندي فرق توقيت ان انا تبقى عندي ضحالة الرؤية ان انا يبقى البروسبكتيف او النظر الى تشيلسي انظر اليه بعين الابيض والازرق كاني برايتون او الابيض والاحمر كاني موناكو هل يعقل لو ده على الاستنتاج بتاعي لو انا نحيت الادارة واقتناعها بكلام الطاقم الاداري هنقول ادارتنا ادارة محترمة ودي العيش لخبازه وبتتكلم بشكل ليبرالي كده وماشية تسلسل الهرمي اللي مليان مساوئ بس بيسمعوا للناس هل يعقل ان انا اخلي الفيجن بتاعتي لنادي انا شايف اللوجو بتاعه ازرق فابيض عليه اسد وهم شايفينه عليه سيجلز ولا موناكو انت متخيل عايزين مشاهد فرق الرؤية يعني هل انا مصير كله متاخد عن طريق المدرين الرياضيين هل ريسكاتي كلها ان انا مشكلتي ان اشيل المدرب او اجيب لاعب غالي كان دايما يقول لك مالك كان كان اسمها ايه؟ اير اسيا اير اسيا بتاعت الطيران لما بعد كده اشترى كان فيرونتينا اعتقد ولا كان نادي ايه في ايطاليا كان بيتكلم بيقول لك اداره شركه الطيران اسهل بكتير من اداره نادي في 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 انجلترا كان لا اشترى نادي في انجلترا 
مدل سبرا باين هنا مش فاكر بصراحه المعلومه لان بيقول لك في الشركه الموضوع عندي كنترولد ان انا عارف بشتري ايه وبكسب ايه وبخسر ايه لكن بيقول لك انا بعمل كل التفاصيل وانا بشتري النادي وفي الاخر بيقرر مدرب و11 لاعب مصير كل اللي انا عملته يا يعني في الاخر الجمهور يقلب عليا ويقول لك انت فاشل ومشروعك فاشل لازم تمشي لازم تجيب لي المهاجم الفلاني لازم تجيب لعيب الوسط الفلاني لازم تمشي المدرب لازم تجيب المدرب الفلاني فبيقول لك انا في الاخر كل الكنترول اللي انا كنت بعمله وبحاول اعمله بيضيعوا لي 11 واحد في الملعب يا اما ينجحوا لي 11 واحد في الملعب ده بالظبط حل تشيلسي حاليا ولذلك تاني برجع من 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 كلام سايمون كوبر ده على على مالك هذا النادي واستنتاجي الشخصي على ابني ودايما هفرض حسن النيه ليهم ان اقبالي وتوت بويلي عندهم النيه الجيده لصنع شيء لتشيلسي ولكن الطقم اللي تحتهم هو اللي فيه الشر هو اللي فيه الرؤيه الخاطئه لتشيلسي هفرض دي ودي وهقول لك يا عم ما هو فعلا انا ستيل عندي مشاكل في 11 لاعب وعندي مشاكل في مدرب ولذلك ديفيد اورنستون مق... يعني ان لاين مع الخبر بتاع ان موريسيو بوتيتشينيو مكمل طلع بخبر ان سيكون صيف مزدحم جدا اتنين عقلياتهم بتلعب مونوبولي احنا هنبيع ونشتري اكتر من تحقيق الانجاز هل تشيلسي محتاج لعيبه بالشكل اللي هو يخليك تقول ان ده صيف مزدحم انا بقسم بالله لا انا اقسم لك بالله لا وعشان ما تبيعش الوهم للجمهور مش هيكون مزدحم انت عندك مشاكل في اللعب النظيف مش هتعرف تشتري زي ما انت فاكر انت صيفك المزدحم عباره انك تبيع